Well, in the military, I was called there in 1956, and uh, so I was called in the, in the Navy. And uh, actually, the Navy usually were enlisted men, and I was drafted. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it was a mandatory service in France to be drafted, and it was during the war in Algeria, so most people were sent to Algeria. Of course, and as I said, uh, in the Navy, usually it was enlisted people, except for the chef, who had some type of arrangement with the Société des Cuisiniers de Paris. <laughs> so they would send those chefs to different, uh, uh, you know, boats and ship and all that where they work on top, because contrary to here, the chef uh, in front, in those organizations, is going to go to the market, he's got a certain budget, he's got to work out, and for a big holiday like Christmas too, those guys expect to have not only turkey or lobster or whatever, so you have to work out your budget, Normally, so professionals are used in this way, certainly in the Navy. So I was sent in the Navy and I went time to do boot camp uh, near Bordeaux there for about eight weeks. And uh, well, it was pretty grueling, you know, and that's some type of commando thing that, that I did there. I was in really good physical shape. And then I was marked to go to Algeria, again, another commando type of marine. and. Uh, I was all excited for that, of course, as a young idiot, you know, so you think war is great, but uh, my mother was crazy because my brother was there. My brother was uh, 16 months older than me, and as I say, he was an engineer, so he was in the, in the Air Force. He was a sergeant, actually, in the Air Force, because he was. And he was in, the, <coughs> in combat zone near Sidi Bel Abbas, next to Algiers. And theoretically, at that time, they did not send two brother of the same family at the same time for the drafted, not the enlisted, but for the drafted, because they had a whole family being killed of brothers, so uh, uh, the, the, the one of them has to come back before the other one going. So things changed, and I was sent back to Paris with uh, to work at, um, at the Admiralty, you know, serving the big uh, brass there and uh, work in the kitchen there. And uh, at some point, I had a friend of mine that I met there who was from Lyon, and uh, he was a chef as well, and he was working for the, um, the, the minister of, um, again, of Treasury, the Treasury Minister, uh, whatever, and the, which was an extraordinary place because it's on the, the side where you have the, the Louvre Museum on one side, and on the other side, the Minister of Finance, you know, the Treasury Minister. So those apartments were, uh, during the time of Napoleon to I mean, the old type of uh, thing. And, uh, but he never worked in Paris, that young man. So he told me, you know, I, I have banquet which are scheduled, and uh, I really don't know much about classic. Can you give me a hand? I said, I'd love to. I mean, so he asked uh, Weber, big brass there, which called Weber, they call <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I was sent there to, to give him a hand and start doing special dinner with him and so forth. And I continued doing this, and uh, eventually he was, uh, he, he was released, you know, and uh, so they asked me to come there for the Minister of Finance in the Treasury, which I stayed a couple of months, and at that point, during the Fourth Republic in France, the government were changing at a fairly rapid pace, and that... Uh, uh, that Minister of Finance, name was Gaia, became uh, the president in France. That is the president of the Council of Ministers, which is the Prime Minister. At that time in France, under the Fourth Republic, the, the president didn't have much power, like the Queen of England. It was the Prime Minister who had the power at Matignon, Hotel Matignon, which was a private uh, residence on the Rue de Varennes, which had the largest private uh, garden in Paris. It's, uh, an old hotel of the 18th century. So uh, he became the prime minister there. So I was sent there the first day that he became to cook a dinner for eight, I remember. I had to be rushed there. And, uh, and then I stayed there, of course, and uh, I, uh, I ended up going under three ministers. His government lasted six months and uh, whatever. And then uh, the one after lasted like a month and then it blew again on the 18th of May, I think, De Gaulle came to power and I stayed with De Gaulle until I was released uh, uh, close to 1959, you know. So, uh, so I was there, but at that time, 
you know, again, there was no recognition in the kitchen. Uh, I worked with Madame de Gaulle during the de Gaulle thing. She called me Petit Jacques, you know. I mean, uh, I saw the president, of course, for like Christmas, for a different occasion where he would come and uh, toast with us. And before I left, they invited me in their room. He wished me good luck and gave me a cigar, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I did the menu on Monday with Madame de Gaulle for the week. Uh, and there was the secretary of treasurer, different dinner, eight, six, eight. Usually small dinner like this, when we had large dinner, about 40 or 50, it was a kind of catering business who came and did it. But uh, I served like Ivan Aware, Nehru, Tito, Macmillan, those were the head of state at the time. Dinner of 10, 10 12, 8. And uh, certainly when it came to those type of dinner, then you deal with the protocol. Like, for example, uh, if I have the, the, you know, the, the, the Prime Minister of India, we're not going to sell beef, you know, and if I have, uh, the, you know, President of Israel, I'm not going to sell a, you know, a piece of pork or whatever like this. So there is certain protocol that the protocol will tell you in addition, will tell you the menu has to be long or very complicated or more fancy or shorter. So all of that is worked out by the protocol. Or they'll tell you, like when Eisenhower came, uh, he already had dinner with the president or a meal at uh, maybe at the American embassy or somewhere, and they said they served that type of fish too, so I wasn't going to serve the same type of fish. So, which is different when I did the menu on Sunday. On Sunday after church, the whole family ate there, and it was, uh, yeah, they were very uh, devout uh, uh, Catholics, so. But uh, there was a Dominical, the Sunday meal, you know, with the president, his wife, children, grandchildren did. So at that point, they ate exactly what they wanted to eat. Mme de Gaulle said, I want a leg of lamb, not too rare, so good, this, that, too. So that was a different type of, uh, of thing that when we served out of state. I have to say also that on that Sunday meal, I had to do a special ledger, an accounting that they pay from their own pocket. So that was pretty... Uh, remarkable in the sun that it was a drop of water in what we spent, but uh, the goal were very ethical this way. That was the way it was, even though he wasn't a wealthy man at all. They weren't. So, uh, but during those dinner that I did, we tried to take a peek outside to see, you know, where the celebrity it was, but never, you would never, never be called to the dining room and get kudo like now or two. That did not exist, period. No one ever came to the kitchen. If anyone came to the kitchen because something was wrong, you were going to be yelled at. That's what I bought the end of it. Maybe the day after, when I see my degree, they say, it was good last night, thank you, or something like that. But that would go maybe as far as this. So it was a totally different way than How? it is now. Yeah.